It has been a disappointing start for Falcons fans this season, to say the least, as those dirty birds begin with a one and three record. But can they turn it around? I think they can. <laughs> Here's End Zone host Bill Shanks with this week's BS Report. After Sonny's loss to the New England Patriots, the Atlanta Falcons fell to one and three on the season. It's not quite the start most were hoping for with the team expected to be a Super Bowl contender. We know about the injuries and they are severe. The running back, fullback, defensive end, linebacker and cornerback are all out. And sure, if they had been even 80% healthy, they may have beaten the Patriots on Sunday night. But that's football and the injuries do not hide other problems with this team. For instance, can you blame the loss of running back Steven Jackson for the lack of success in the red zone? Not really. Look at what happened on Sunday. The Falcons flew down the field in the first drive of the game with a no huddle. Atlanta got down to the Patriots five yard line before they settled for a field goal. Then in the second quarter, the Falcons drove all the way down to the Patriots seven yard line. Instead of settling for three more points, head coach Mike Smith went for it on fourth and two. But Matt Ryan, the quarterback, forced a pass to Ronnie White and it was incomplete. Then in the fourth quarter, after a great comeback, the Falcons drove down the field and knocked on the door again. But on fourth and seven from the Patriots 10 yard line, Ryan threw another incomplete pass. You just can't leave points on the board like that when you play a team like the Patriots. That inability to score points in the red zone inside the 20 yard line is why this Atlanta team is now three games under 500. Go back to last season. Wasn't that what happened in the NFC Championship game against San Francisco? Yep, they got all the way down to the San Francisco 10 yard line. They lost by four points and then to start this season in New Orleans, then they have a chance to win only to stall on the Saints three yard line. Yeah, and they lost by six points. Then last week in Miami, didn't the Falcons have a chance to win, but again struggled inside the 20 yard line? Yeah, and they lost by four points. And those last four losses, the Falcons are six for 18 in the red zone. That's not really the sign of a team that might win a Super Bowl. So who can fix this? Well, two people really. First, offensive coordinator Dirk Cutter needs to get the vertical passing game going. Throw the ball down the field. Quarterback Matt Ryan has Julio Jones, Ronnie White, Harry Douglas, and Tony Gonzalez, four great receivers. Open it up so you don't have to worry about being inside the 20-yard line. Instead, you score from 20 yards out or more. A lot of this falls on Ryan as well with the suspect offensive line. He's forcing plays because he's worried about getting hit. That's a bad mindset for a quarterback. Ryan must take control of this situation when the Falcon season is going to be over before November. The game next Monday at home against the Jets is a must win situation. And how good is it really to have a must win situation in the first week of October? But if Atlanta falls to one and four, how can they recover, especially with the summer road games against Green Bay and San Francisco, two very good teams. The Falcons have been known as a team that can pull games out late. That's why Matt Ryan has been nicknamed Matty Ice. But recently, it just hasn't worked. And that's why this Falcons team is in big trouble.